good morning dear students welcome back to our lesson that is life processes okay students so in yesterday's session i have talked to you about the digestive system what are the functions of the digestive system and how digestive system is made up and how what are the organs taking place into the alimentary canal okay or that is called as a gut system so today we are going to have a look on the other part of the digestive system that is called as a uh, digestive glands students whenever we are eating any food that food sometimes that food is very dry right and it is very difficult to digest the food food is unable to digest properly or food is unable to wet properly so in our body in our digestive tract there are some organs there are some glands which are secreting some specific enzymes and those specific enzymes are responsible for the digestion process so today in today's class in today's session we are going to have a closer look on every organ see students digestion is a universal phenomenon right means every organism digestion process is common right so digestion process is called as a universal phenomenon digestion process is universal phenomenon phenomenon okay students digestion this is all about digestion so what happens exactly in the digestion okay what happens see students in the plants nutrition uh, plants is taking its nutrition by the process of photosynthesis we have seen but whenever plant has used some material raw material or some essential material that was inorganic simpler inorganic material plant was using to make it complex means plants were using um, simpler uh, inorganic substances such as carbon dioxide and water to make it complex such as glucose glucose is a actually not complex we can say it's a simple sugar we can say okay or it is a, it is called as a monomer also so it's a simple sugar simple sugar but from atmosphere from surrounding we have taken in our means plant have taken simpler inorganic substances such as co2 and h2o and make it complex with the help of sunlight and chlorophyll this was the nutrition that is the process of photosynthesis into the plants but what happens in the higher organism or we are talking about ourselves as a human being what happens here we are taking complex food complex organic food we are taking complex organic carbohydrates we are taking and we are trying to make them simple okay so breaking down okay so what will be the proper definition of the digestion the conversion of complex organic food into simpler inorganic one this will be the proper definition of the digestion process and this digestion process will be taking place in presence of a enzymes which are secreted by the digestive glands okay so what is the digestion conversion conversion of complex organic food material organic food material into simple diffusible 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 and absorbable form absorbable form okay why diffusible and absorbable that i shall let you know very soon but till that we keep in mind the definition of the digestion digestion is a universal phenomenon conversion of a complex organic food complex organic food means what we take glucose especially okay we take glucose but we don't take only one molecule of a glucose we use as a starch right which is the a polymer or various molecules of glucose combines together that is called as a starch okay we store means we take food in the form of starch 
so that conversion of complex organic food material into simpler diffusible simpler diffusible and absorbable form is called as a digestion okay so this is all about digestion now students there are two kinds of nutrients we are using specifically what we can say nutrients in simpler form we can say for the nutrients food right we are taking food into the two forms that is called as a macronutrients macronutrients this is also called as a proximal nutrients this is also called as a proximal nutrients and micronutrients and micronutrients proximal nutrients means what we use we are taking carbohydrates carbohydrates see students 60 to 80% of our diet is carbohydrate because carbohydrate is instant energy giving source instant energy if we want we should take carbohydrate so whenever we are too hungry we don't eat any fruit or we don't eat any chocolate we eat sugar that is a part but we don't eat such things we like to eat rice chapati bhakri like that food we like to eat because carbohydrate is a instant energy source and 60 to 80% of our diet are carbohydrates so carbohydrates then proteins this is called as a instant energy giving source protein proteins are called as a body building food okay proteins are called as a body building food so whenever we are falling ill or any problem if occur to our body we instantly because see growing children especially drink milk and we also offer them mostly milk or fruits because fruits and milks contain a lot amount of proteins in it or egg we can say fishes chicken mutton everything contains proteins because proteins are is responsible for the proper growth and maintenance of the body repairing of the body so that it is called as a body building food so it will also come into the proximal or the macronutrient that is protein so what will come carbohydrate protein and then lipids lipids means fatty material okay oily substances see so, students here i would like to tell you one thing what happens whenever but here the carbohydrates can digest very fast carbohydrates can digest very fast if we will eat only rice and chapati and bhakri then frequently we would like to eat or our stomach will be empty faster it will not remain for long in our stomach it will digest earlier protein will remain little long than carbohydrates and lipids are for long here i would like to give a simple example see once i was fasting and i tried to, to eat only one uh, juice fruit juice because fruit juice contain sugar means one kind of starch or glucose after one hour i again started feeling very hungry because it is contains carbohydrates and carbohydrates can remain for only one to two hour in our stomach after it it starts digesting so stomach remains empty immediately later on the next day again i started to have a fast and i i have drunk it on the same day on the next day milk after drinking milk for 3 to 4 hours i was not feeling uh, cravings of eating right i was not feeling any cravings for uh, food so 3 hours or more than 3 hours the protein rich because milk is the great source of the protein so protein can remain in our stomach for long time right and later on lipids mean some fatty material on a third day again i have kept the fast and i ate something which is uh, fried okay which is fried that i started eating or right? i at that food i had eaten and for long time my stomach was full there were no there was no craving for food for long time more than 5 hours uh, i was not feeling to eat anything why it is so this is because carbohydrates can be digested earlier as compared to protein and the lipids so i hope you understand this concept macronutrients later on these are going to be converted carbohydrates after digestion process 
these are going to be convert into carbohydrates are going to be convert into simple glucose right proteins are converted into amino acids amino acids and lipids are converted into fatty acids and glycerol and glycerol okay students the final product after digestion whenever this will get absorbed by the small intestine it will be in the form of glucose carbohydrate will be in the form of glucose then protein will be in the form of amino acids lipids will be in the form of fatty acids and glycerol this will be possible because of the digestive enzymes okay students then micronutrients vitamins can come in it vitamins can come in it then minerals can come in it then water also can come in it and some amount of protein also can come in it okay this is called as a protective food this food is called as a or these nutrients are called as a protective food or nutrients means this is uh, this is protecting us from various diseases and all but these are required in our body in very less extent not like this major nutrients or macro nutrients like carbohydrates proteins and lipids this will required in a very less extent okay and here also one thing is there that some vitamins should be taken on a daily basis because vitamins are also two types water soluble vit vitamins and water insoluble vitamins if water soluble vitamins are there then that can dissolve into the blood into the water and along with the excretory system or along with the urine we pass through that these vitamins can go on a daily basis so some vitamins must be consumed on a daily basis for example vitamin c right see during this covid situation vitamin c is very much needed but it is given 1000 mg capsule is given on a regular basis why it is so because these are the water soluble vitamin means once we will excrete once we will urinate this vitamins will go out along with the urine because we are knowing some uh, the material drugs and toxins which are dissolved into the, our uh, blood that are getting uh, getting read uh, by the excretory system that we will learn in excretory system in the detail that we will talk later about it but vitamins are of two types when well, some vitamins are not needed to take on a daily basis they can remain in our body for long time so vitamin c is a very good example of a uh, water soluble example so it should be taken on a daily basis okay so i hope you understand this concept that is nutrients are of two types macronutrients and the uh, micronutrients okay carbohydrates first we take carbohydrates which are complex and this carbohydrates we will make it simpler form into the form of glucose and this glucose this amino acids this fatty acids and glycerol will get absorbed by our small intestine but this process we will see and proteins and lipids and their uh, vitamins minerals water and the roughage this is protective food okay students so i'll move towards the digestive glands now I 
salivary gland see here students in our mouth there are three pairs of the salivary glands where these pairs are located one pair is located below our tongue okay the second pair is located at the back of our ear right back of our ear and the third pair of our salivary gland is located at the end of the jaw okay so there are three pairs of the salivary glands which secrete saliva okay whenever see any tasty food right or any uh, smell if you will smell any food okay essence or any food material smell if you will inhale or if we smell it anyhow then the saliva starts secreting especially when we uh, try to see or when we see a sour food such as tamarind right lemon that time immediately by taking their names also the saliva starts secreting in our body for every meal whatever meals we are taking for every meal 500 ml saliva is secreted in our mouth okay every meal means approximately uh, 1200 to 1500 saliva is secreted on a daily basis so what it does we we'll see what happens salivary amylase has secreted now which is acting on this starch the starch is what this is called as a we can see here a chain of a glucose and chain of a glucose is called as what polysaccharides what it is called polysaccharides poly means mainly and saccharides means sugar right poly means mainly mainly and saccharides means what sugar so polysaccharides means many molecules of many uh, molecules of glucose are there so salivary amylase what it does it tries to when it acts on it it tries to break it down into disaccharides the complete digestion is not taking place of starch in presence of only saliva it's not possible so it try to convert it into disaccharides disaccharides this disaccharide is also called as a maltose it is also called as a maltose means it will just break this whole chain it will break into two two form in the uh, two molecules it will convert right two molecules of glucose will form a disaccharides again di means two molecules of glucose and saccharides means what sugar so two molecules of sugar will get formed and that is called as what maltose okay so here what will happen because of the salivary glands saliva salivary gland secretes saliva salivary amylase it will secrete which is important enzyme for to digest carbohydrate okay so that is starch means the polysaccharides means the many sugar molecules okay that will convert into disaccharides such as maltose so here one gland is finished now the food the food is too dry right what we will do here in the mouth the mechanical breaking down of the food will take place here means we will chew the food right we will chew food means with the help of our teeth we have a 32 teeth right uh, so with the help we will chew the food properly and because of chewing and because of this saliva the food will become wet and it will convert into bolus form means it will be uh, convert into soft ball like structure S soft ball like structure will get formed and that is called as what bolus here what is present our food material plus saliva right which will convert that food into the bolus form see here in the food the mechanical breaking down of the food is taking plus mechanical breaking down means what we are just chewing the food with the help of our teeth okay and then the food will come down see this is mouth in the mouth it will happen okay with the help of the teeth mechanical breaking down of the food would takes plus to form a wet bolus okay wet bolus then this wet bolus we will try to engulf it when we will engulf it see your students when we will engulf it this is you can see this is the common passage this is the common passage for the air which is passing means oxygen we inhale and food we take in this is the common passage that passage is called as a pharynx 
fanning students that passage is called as a fanning here this is the common passage for the food material as well as for the oxygen right so food will enter inside huh and here is the common passage means oxygen also or food material also but what will happen students see your students now i have drawn here one another pipe like structure this is also pipes you are knowing students this is also pipes right it's a also pipes and this is what a wind pipe this is what wind pipe this is also called as a glottis this is also called as a glottis or the respiratory tract also you can say for it so when we try to engulf the food this glottis will have one covering this glottis will have one covering and that covering will called as a epiglottis what it is called epiglottis it is called as a epiglottis so when we engulf the food that time what will happen the wind pipe must be closed whenever we will eat food we will try to engulf the food when we will try to swallow the food that time the wind pipe or glottis must be closed and that will be closed by one covering that is called as a epiglottis so when we engulf that time this glottis is covered by epiglottis and the food is going down into the food pipe or esophagus but student whenever we try to eat food hurriedly in a hurry uh, in a very hurry we try to eat food that time what happens students can you guess what happens we start coughing we start coughing right and coughing means what exactly the uh, because see this wind pipe we allow to enter only oxygen it will not allow to enter any foreign particle for the wind pipe the food particle will be the foreign particle because the food particle should be going to the stomach for the further digestion and this oxygen should go into the wind pipe into the it will go into the lungs right if the food will enter in here it will go into the lungs and can cause infection also but this process does not occur only because this wind pipe will never accept any food particle in it because according to the wind pipe the food particle is what the foreign material so it will not allow the entry of the food particle into the wind pipe and with the help of very force forcefully or forcibly it will try to get out it will try to get read of this food particle out of the wind pipe that will lead to cough in marathi for coughing we say thaska thaska lagne mhanto apan tala right so that is what coughing okay coughing for both thaska and khokla same words are there coughing so what will happen here when the food particle will try to enter into the glottis or the wind pipe it will not allow to enter forcefully that food particle will go out in the form of coughing okay and so that this food pipe whenever we have something that time it is closed by the epiglottis that's it about and this wall is same students this wall is same means this is food pipe this is wind pipe and this is the adjacent wall for both of them okay and this system that is called the respiratory system we will have a look after digestive system on the respiratory system so we will so we will keep it up, aside or apart we will talk about this system later okay now we will go ahead so this is what the esophagus i said you yesterday esophagus will take in food by the process of the rhythmic contraction and relaxation of the muscle called as a peristalsis now the food will enter into the uh, stomach but here when it will enter here there are some muscular muscles are present which will not allow to directly enter the food into the stomach they will regulate the entry they will regulate the entry of the food into the stomach and those muscles are called as the sphincter muscles what those muscles are called sphincter muscles now the food will go into the stomach see here students in esophagus only the food is traveling from the mouth to the stomach and the wall of the esophagus is made up of the mucus mucus means uh, some soft substance okay so whenever we are feeling very cold 
when come that time from the nose one substance is coming out right that is very sticky that is called as a mucus so our whole digestive tract is actually the inner wall or the lining of the digestive tract is made up of the mucus only okay so the inner wall of this uh, esophagus is made up of the mucus so this wall will be of mucus and so that easily the food can move inside with the help of peristaltic movement and here it will allow the entry sphincter muscle whenever it will become relaxed that time only food will enter into the stomach until that thing will be closed do you understand it will be closed it will slowly open when it will be completely relaxed that time the food will enter into the uh, stomach okay so in esophagus there is no enzyme secreted only the travel of the food is taking place now the food has come into very important organ that is called as the stomach now stomach is actually secreting three types of this is the stomach the inner wall of the stomach the lining of the stomach secretes gastric juices gastric juices see your students whenever the word is come with the gastro gastric that is all related with the digestive tract okay gastric juices will get secreted which juices it would be first it would be hcl which is of 1 bh see your student hcl which will be secreted by the stomach lining of the stomach that is called as the gastric juices hcl which is of 1 bh means highly acidic or we can say strong acid strong acid is secreted very much concentrated also we can say which means what potential of hydrogen very soon into the chemistry you will get to know about the ph very soon you will have second lesson in the chemistry uh, acid bases and salts here it will be more clearer for you what is meant by 1 ph 1 ph means very strong very much strong or very much concentrated hydrochloric acid hydrochloric acid is actually strong acid there are two kinds of acids strong acids and the weak acids so hydrochloric acid is very very strong acid so which is of 1 ph okay now the second thing which is secret by the gland is what that is mucus okay and third thing which will secret by the gland is um pepsin okay the third thing which secret from the gland is or gastric juice as a pepsin okay now what is the function of the hcl the food which is enter into the stomach is as it is right it 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 does not involve any enzyme except salivary amylase so what will happen the food will become acidic the food will become acidic over here right at the same time you can see the ph of that hcl is 1 ph so which is very strong so along with the food if any foreign particle if any pathogen any harmful microorganism would try to enter along with the food into our digestive tract then into this very much low ph it will not survive students it will not survive at all it will die immediately you can imagine one ph strong acid you can go to the lab and see the strong acid of one ph which is really very strong it's a fuming liquid the fumes are coming out of it fumes are coming out of it that much it is strong so what would happen if the microorganism would enter microorganism would die over here so it is not only making our food acidic but it is actually protective also which gives the protection okay so any foreign particle any foreign pathogen is not allowed to enter into the stomach later on mucus mucus is also also a protective membrane it's a protective lining present on the wall of the stomach see a student as 1 ph of strong acid is secreted into the stomach then this wall of the stomach may be in danger or it may have any effect on it because at this ph if the this ph is not suitable for us we are not able to think also of it then how our stomach can present here or how the stomach can work over here that
that is because at the inner lining of our uh, uh, this stomach there is a layer of a uh, sticky substance is present and that is called as what mucus which is actually a protective layer but one more thing here students if we eat already the ph 1 ph of uh, it series there and already we will uh, in that we will eat a spicy uh, then sour or very oily food then what can happen it will harm to our stomach and it may cause a small small wound on our uh, lining of the stomach or on the stomach wall the wall may will have a small small wound on it small small wound on it this small small cut on it due to the hyper acidity right hyper acidity or due to the spicy oily food it will may have a small small wound on it acidity you might be knowing acidity can be caused due to overeating or not taking meal on time or eating more uh, spicy oily food these are the three reasons to have a acidity one reason is what overeating when we eat a lot our stomach starts aching and that is called that is because of the acidity so we should have a diet in a small extent with a proper biting or with the help of the teeth we should bite that food and then we have to allow to enter into the stomach so what happens because of the uh, this first reason is what that uh, acidity is caused due to the um, excess eating or overeating the second reason if we will not eat on time if you will not eat on time the wall will secrete hcl and that hcl will try to move towards our esophagus and then to, then it can come into our mouth so our mouth turns a little uh, sour in taste and we don't feel better in that that is also the reason of the acidity and third reason i said you overeating of the oily spicy food that is also the reason for the acidity so for what happens the food is becoming acidic protection so what happens here the wounds are caused right and that wounds means long term acidity will lead to peptic ulcer here peptic word is also related with the stomach peptic or gastric ulcer can cause due to the hyper acidity means if there is a less amount of acidity we can ignore it right we can ignore it or we can take any tablets in the uh, which will contain the magnesium hydroxide we can take any tablets and we can reduce the effect of the acidity but the long term acidity will lead to the gastric ulcer what is mean by gastric ulcer students you are quite aware about the mouth ulcer means from inside our mouth there are small small bristles are occur and we are unable to eat our food properly you might have taken this experience whenever we are having some problem medical problem that time we eat excess amount of medicines and uh, after some days our mouth starts having bristles from inside right and then we are unable to eat our food properly means we feel uh, itchy and all we feel right so that uh, process is uh, that thing is called as a mouth ulcer but mouth ulcer can be repaired easily by applying some medicine over it but if gastric ulcer will be there means there would be wound on the wall of our stomach then here application of the medicine is not possible okay medicine we can take but application of medicine is not possible so gastric ulcer means hyper acidity may lead to the gastric ulcer okay this is the reason for the ulcer to happen means ulcer means have a wound on the wall of the stomach okay so this is the second this is the hcl i have talk about then what is mean by pepsin student pepsin is a protein digesting enzyme okay here what happens students if suppose proteins are there okay molecules of proteins are there then these molecules of proteins just they will loosen here complete digestion of the protein will not take place over here means pepsin is a protein digestive enzyme i said you but if it is the molecule of the protein then it will just it will not convert directly into the amino acid this pepsin is not responsible to convert the proteins into amino acid just it will loosen the molecule into the uh, proteins only but it will lose it it will not be combined like a protein it will just lose so complete digestion will not take place here okay students 
So I hope you understand what the stomach would do. Now the food has entered into the stomach. The bolus has entered into the stomach. These all enzymes are secreted into the stomach. So those enzymes plus plus our food is all together called as a chyme. This all together is called as a chyme, which is made by the churning of our food. Okay, churning of the food means mixing this all the all uh, enzymes into the food that is called as a churning process. And that after churn, whatever we get form into the stomach, that is called as a chyme. Okay, students. So we'll go ahead now with the next gastric gland.
there are the lipids molecules which are uh, very large molecules right these lipids molecules or fat molecules simply we say fat molecules which are very large right so what will happen when this biopigment we act on those fat molecule which are present in our uh, stomach then what will happen this large fat molecule may get converted into the small fat molecule it will just get converted it will not completely digest student it's very important it will not digest it will just large globules of the fats or large fat globules will try to convert into simpler or small globules of fats only this will only the process performed by the bipigments i hope you understand liver gallbladder what it will do it will act on the large fat globules and that large fat globules will convert into small fat globules and this process is called as emulsification of fat molecule this process is called as a emulsification process emulsification process this process every day you see students see whenever we wash our oily utensils if you try to wash them with only simple tap water it is not possible to remove all the oil particles from that plate or from that utensil so what we do we are taking soap and we are trying to clean it when we, soap is acting on that oil particle and what happens that oil particles it starts forming into the small small molecules and then it get rid of all the particles get rid of so the same process means saponification reaction very soon in lesson number 4 of chemistry that is carbon and its compound you are going to learn about emulsification uh, and the saponification reaction but you can just relate this emulsification reaction with that Uh, when the action of the oil particle and soap is taking place just you can relate with that okay so emulsification means large globules will convert into the small fat globules that's it okay so here i have completed liver and the gallbladder now we will go ahead one more gland is there that is called as a pancreas that is called what pancreas pancreas is called as a mixed gland because it is working like endocrine also and exocrine also okay it's working like endocrine gland also and exocrine what is endocrine and what is exocrine we will learn in lesson 2nd uh, uh, 7th lesson we will 8th lesson we will learn the name is uh, sorry the name is uh, brain which is related to our brain control and coordination sorry in the control and coordination we will learn about endocrine system and exocrine system too so in that we will learn just keep in mind that this pancreas is called as a mixed gland it's a mixed gland and it is the second most largest gland in the body it means after liver the pancreas is coming understood this is the second most largest gland in do our body so it's a mixed gland which is working like endocrine also and exocrine also what it secretes it secretes pancreatic juices it secretes pancreatic juices what are those it secretes trypsin trypsin and lactase <clears throat> okay pancreatic juices contains trypsin and lactase okay what is the function of the trypsin it is also protein digestive enzyme see students what pepsin has done pepsin has just loosened the molecule of the protein so here also it is also protein digestive enzyme this is also protein digestive enzyme and what is the function of lipase lipase are cellular lipids right so lipase will act on the small globules of the fat means lipase will be be able to convert lipids into fatty acids and glycerol and glycerol do you understand what will happen these are the 
are the lipids now we have received the small globules of the fats or the uh, lipids that small lipid molecule will convert into the fatty acids due to the action of the lipase which is secreted by the pancreatic juices by the pancreas i hope you understand this is the gland which is present here pancreatic juices secreted by the uh, pancreas contains trypsin which is protein digestive enzyme and lipase which is uh, secretes uh, which is lipids uh, digestive enzyme which lipids converts into fatty acids and the glycerol <coughs> okay now see here student when food now this uh, all the it is secreted so the food contains already some enzymes now these enzymes are secreted from the liver from gallbladder and from the pancreas now this will enter into the small intestine now all that food will enter into the small intestine okay the food will enter into the small intestine but 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 whenever it will try to enter it will also this stomach will also not immediately or easily it will not allow the food enter into the small intestine what will happen here students whenever the food will transfer from stomach to the small intestine here also muscles would be present and those muscles are also called as what sphincter muscle means sphincter muscles are present here also sphincter muscles are present here also everywhere all over the gut the sphincter muscles are present which will not allowing the food to enter into the further part directly so now the food has entered into the small intestine okay and small intestine is called as a complete digestion small intestine is called site of complete digestion okay student now what will happen in the small intestine also the small intestinal juices small intestinal juices will mix again into the food particle okay and here the complete digestion process will takes place means carbohydrates here into the small intestine carbohydrates rates will convert into glucose proteins will converts into amino acids and lipids will convert into fatty acids and this all material now everything which is what i said the definition of the digestion breaking down of a complex organic food into simpler inorganic one or into the simpler form simpler form how simpler form diffusible and absorbable okay so what will happen into the small intestine the yesterday i said you the wall of the small intestine has a fin finger like projection numerous numerous amount of blood capillaries are present see here students i shall show you so it will be clear of you suppose this is the wall of the small intestine this is the wall of the small intestine ha huh, one more thing small intestine is actually length is too long but then too it is called as a small intestine because of its lumen or because of its width this width is too small right and so that the small intestine is actually it's in a coiled form it's compactly kept in between the large intestine in um, in the large intestine but it is the too long right but here also one thing ki herbivores animals will have a uh, large small intestine so a small intestine and carnivores will have a small a small intestine that is because of the enzyme that i shall talk to you later so what happens here the wall if you talk about the wall of the small intestine they inside it a numerous finger like blood capillaries would be present into the form of a finger or we can say finger like projection a lot of blood capillaries would be there a lot of blood capillaries would be there why there is a lot of blood capillaries into the wall of the small intestine to absorb the nutrients formed by the process of digestion whatever the nutrients are formed by the process of digestion 
those all nutrients will get absorbed by these small small capillaries. Okay, so why the shape of this capillaries, blood vessel, blood capillaries is like uh, this finger like projection because to increase the surface area. If it will be only one, then it will be like this only. So if we will make a shape is like this, then it will increase the surface area. So lot of amount, lot of amount or lot amount of nutrients can be absorbed easily from the small intestine to the part wherever it is needed. Understood students? So this is the structure and this structure is called as what? Villa. I say you said villa. Okay? And singular is called as a villus. Okay? So here the absorption will take place of the nutrients. Now, whatever the undigested part is there, <coughs> this is the small intestine. This is small intestine. Those enzymes started decreasing. 
increasing it's a one kind of the evolutionary change student it's a evolution you will learn into the evolution chapter that genetics and evolution you will learn more in that so what happens here <coughs> that part is of no use later on early man was using it but later on as we get developed we started eating the cooked and the soft food it starts it stops its secretion because it was not needed only and so that this part become of no use and so that this part is called as a vestigial organ of the human body okay but in some cases this part if it is attached to the small intestine then it may cause extreme stomach ache that will lead to the disease called as a appendicitis okay and then in such case this piece of this appendix or the piece of this appendix has to get cut by the surgeon it should get operated by the proper medical practitioner and then it is removed but in some cases in some organism it is harm it is harmless it does not cause any injury to any human being or any problem to any human being so it may be present in you but in some cases in some very less cases it may cause irritation pain and extreme stomach ache so it can be removed by the surgery or it can be operated okay so i hope you understand all digestive glands and the all uh, digestive system thank you students thank you very much